a bull and do a sacrifice, slay the bull, when there is something that is more acceptable. But you got a dead animal in the presence of all Israel and high priests and so on, and they're touching up the blood and handling the dead animal, and that does not defile them. Does that make any sense to you? This is June 14, 2018. My lesson today is titled, When God Misses the Mark. A very simple thought here. I'm reading from Leviticus chapter 4. I'm going to read about three verses. And I'm talking about the sacrificial system as I've been showing you for a while that the God of Israel did not order any animal sacrifices or flesh sacrifices for redemption or salvation of sins or to make one right before him. You're supposed to do that from your heart by living clean and having justice between yourself and others and uh, so on, you know, living good on the earth. Now, I've shown you in a number of videos in the past that the sacrifices as skilled Torah teachers will let you know are a lesser kind of way to deal with the Most High. It is really no kind of way to deal with the Most High because you should not be doing that. But in Leviticus chapter 4, verse 2 to 4, apparently this is the God of Israel telling the children of Israel after they've come out of Egypt to do sacrifices and he's he's telling them through Moses so I shall just go from verse 1 to 4 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying so the Most High of Israel is saying this now speak unto the children of Israel saying if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed to do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned a young bullock, so animal, without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And then he goes on to talk about taking the blood and doing stuff. All this blood stuff, as I learned from when I was a child in Jamaica, was linked to stuff like, you know, occult practice, right? Voodoo, witchcraft black magic, all that kind of gory stuff. But the children of Israel are supposed to be these voodoo type people, these occult magic type people, doing this kind of stuff with the blood of a slain animal whose carcass is laying dead. And they're, they're handling this dead body in a time when they're supposed to be sometimes having some feast or or holy day before the Lord and they're having themselves all caught up with blood, handling blood with their hands and celebrating a holy day before the Most High with the presence of death right in their midst. And this is how they present themselves before the Most High. So no, something is wrong with this book. The God of Israel could not do this or the Torah has been tampered with or it was never given by the Most High. Either it was tampered with or it was never given, period. Because the Most High just can't be saying this stuff. They have just zombified us so much under the guise of religion that we'll just believe that this and that is right just because it's in the book. So if they tell you God says it, but here I'm going to show that God missed the mark, as far as I can tell. So he tells them to do all this stuff with the blood, and in on a holy day, for example, or in a special um, occasion before the Most High, when you're looking for life from spending time with the Most High, 
you're actually dealing with death of a dead body laying down in your midst before the Most High. Yet in a place like Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44, he says, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. But they can defile themselves by handling on some high holy day or other with a dead body, dead flesh, and dipping into the blood with it to sprinkle the blood and so on. Like they're working some kind of obia or something like that. So by saying, ye shall be holy for I am holy, he's basically saying to them, be like me. So separate yourself from the practices of the earth and be like me. And don't defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing, but you can certainly be handling a dead animal and digging in it with your hands with the blood and all that kind of stuff, splashing the blood everywhere you need to splash it. And that does not defile you. You are holy for that. But if you touch some creeping thing that has life in it which life is a gift from the creator then you are defiled but you got a dead animal in the presence of all israel and high priests and so on and they're touching up the blood and handling the dead animal and that does not defile them does that make any sense to you but you got a dead animal in the presence of all israel and high priests and so on and they're touching up the blood and handling the dead animal and that does not defile them does that make any sense to you? It's kind of like saying, if they had gotten some commandment, don't handle the garbage. Don't, don't keep your garbage around too long and so on. And, you know, as it will get stinky or whatever, it will defile you. Because all kinds of bacteria and so on from all this decaying food is going to be in the garbage. But you got a dead animal that you're handling and you're sprinkling about everywhere and gnashing up the place with it till like even the Kidron Valley blood was flowing down and so on. and that doesn't defile you but the garbage that you didn't take out yet that defiles you because you've got it in your house that doesn't make sense absolutely doesn't make sense Leviticus 20 verse 26 and ye shall be holy unto me for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from other people that you should be mine. So again here he's telling them that they should be like him. They have to be different because apparently other people of the earth are not like him. Because they never got his laws and so on. His teachings. So they're not like him. So these people who got his Torah should be like him. They should see to it that they are like him, that they are holy, that they are set apart, that they show themselves as different, because he has severed them, cut them off or separated them from other people, yet they are doing what other people are doing when other people kill bulls and splash blood everywhere and so on in their seances and rituals. But the God of Israel want them to do this. Now, as far as I can tell, the God of Israel missed the mark with this sacrificial stuff if the sacrificial laws came from him. If it didn't, then he didn't miss the mark. But if it did, and Israelites teach that he did give these sacrificing um, instructions, then, then for sure he missed the mark. So now, let's read something else here now. From Proverbs 21. Verse 3, and there are other verses like this, but I've given others before. I just want to keep this a little bit on the shorter side because I've got even tons more of lessons to do. Proverbs 21, verse 3, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice, than killing, than slaying, than slaying your bull, than slaying your lamb. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable. More acceptable, right? So, in other words, to be righteous, like in government and in your laws of how you treat and deal with each other and live in the land with each other and so on, is more acceptable to the Lord. So, basically, living in a way where everybody is treated fairly and people can have their life lived properly because nobody is 
enslaving them and cheating them bad, being overbearing with them, taking advantage of them, deceiving them and stuff like that, that is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice, than slaying a bull, than slaying a lamb on a high holy day. More acceptable. Now, we know when you deal with more, you're just saying something that is just, it, it's, it's just at another level where nothing else is going to compete with it. It's great. So he says, more acceptable than sacrifice. Yet this same God of Israel tells Israel in many places, but like in Leviticus chapter 4 that I just read from verse 1 to 4, that they should kill a bull and do a sacrifice slay the bull when there is something that is more acceptable more acceptable than sacrifice and look at the many other places where he told them to do these sacrifices and to kill animals and kill lambs and so on for their sins of injustice when he cried out against their injustices in the land instead they were being taught by their Torah that their God, the God of Israel, wanted them for these infractions to offer another sacrifice and day of atonement and stuff like that. When there was something more acceptable, but he's telling them to do something less acceptable, which is to offer a sacrifice. So he missed the mark by telling them, you shall be holy as I am holy. In other words, be like me, but instead of getting them to be like him, Although sometimes he did try, so I won't rob that. But then he slips in other times where he's telling them to be less than what they should be. Instead of them trying to be like him. He gives them something that's less acceptable. When the scriptures here are saying that justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. But he gives them a less acceptable way to get to him and a less access, um, acceptable way to be holy, a less acceptable way to be like him. In other words, if it is less acceptable, this great God who is way much more righteous and just than we are, we will never get there or even be trying to approach him with a lesser way. Because he's giving us, by the sacrificial system, the sacrificial laws, a less acceptable way, you will never get to the more acceptable by doing the less acceptable. And sacrificing is a less acceptable way to the Most High. Less acceptable. So what's the God of Israel doing? Dropping the ball, as I'm saying here, missing the mark by instructing people in his Torah to take a less acceptable way to get to a more acceptable God. To get to a more acceptable path to God, I should say. He is a more God, but he gives his people a less standard. Shouldn't he give them a more standard to get to a more kind of God that is far above our righteousness and so on? Our righteousness is like filthy rag, the scripture says. But he gives them a less acceptable way, knowing that our righteousness is already a filthy rag. Give us something that's more acceptable, that's stronger than that, seeing that we're already incapacitated in our holiness and so on by just being in filthy rags. But you give us a less acceptable way to get to you, animal sacrifice. God, the Hebrew God, is missing the mark. So now if I look up acceptable here, definition online, at Wordnik it's saying worthy Acceptable, they said, worthy of being accepted. Adequate to satisfy a need. Requirement or standard satisfactory. Merriam-Webster, capable of or worthy of being accepted. So basically, if he's saying justice and judgment is more acceptable, he's saying it is way up there so far above that your little puny animal sacrifice is not going to cut it, it's not going to meet the mark. Yes, yet this God in the Torah tells us to do something that's so less than the justice and judgment that it will never let us rise to the level of more. We will never 
get to the level of more than sacrifice because we're trusting in sacrifice and after a couple thousand years of being in captivity and kicked out of the land we're still sitting down in babylon hoping and praying for the day when we'll be able to offer again another less acceptable way or sacrifice to get back in the good graces of the most high still in babylon in 2018 we're looking for the sacrificial system to be revamped or to be reinstituted we're looking for a less acceptable way can't you see that the sacrificial system has destroyed us from ancient times from the torah days so destroyed that we're still looking for it even though we've been out of the land for probably two and a half thousand years or so or a little bit more and we're still looking for it because it didn't bring us to the level of more than it kept us less so we could never find a god who's on the more acceptable level because we're always on the less acceptable level looking around left and right for god and couldn't find him because he is not going to be on the level of less than he's up on the level of more than so the torah gave us some instruction from a god that says do the less than to try to find your god knowing that you will never find him on that less than level because he is on the more than level god's instruction says to do all these animal sacrifices god is missing the mark or you have to then begin to think maybe god did not put these things in the torah but somebody else who had no business doing so put these animals sacrificing in the torah and they never had any right to do it because the god of israel never told them to do it either way something is wrong with the animal sacrificing in the torah because if the god of israel is telling us to do these sacrifices of flesh of animals something is seriously wrong